October 31st, 2017, Sheboygan County Board of <coughs> Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on October 27th at 3 p.m. Thank you. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Supervisors present. Thank you. County Administrator's presentation of the 2018 proposed budget. <laughs> Good evening. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to once again present an annual budget that I think everyone in this room at some point has their fingerprints on. So this evening, it's my role to present the budget, though I think for the vast majority, you've heard it, you've been there, and you were a key role in the establishment of the budget. But as you know, we're proud to present a budget this evening that has a modest property tax levy increase of only 1.38%. It's a $660,000 increase for a budget that supports over 200 programs, 825 employees, and does a tremendous amount of good in this community. This increase is associated with net new construction. Net new construction actually came in slightly higher than that. We are able to exceed expectations and come in below the net new construction increase. The proposed tax rate will be $5.45, a decrease of 20 cents, or 3.5% from 2017. So that should be well received. and. As a result of that, on a $100,000 home, to put that in perspective, property taxes will decrease on average about $20. Now when we say this, we know that community by community there can be some variation in whether or not you have a library, whether or not you're a town and you're going to be doing some bridge work, whether or not your uh, respective equalized value was a little bit more than the average. So, Folks need to keep that in perspective, but overall it's a property tax rate decrease, a modest savings, and we're pleased that we were able to once again hold the line on property taxes in Sheboygan County. The 2018 budget preserves core services that people in this community expect. They expect good law enforcement. They expect health and human services to help the neediest of the need, to provide a safety net to people who are hurting. And they expect a transportation system that's going to get them to and from work, where they recreate, their kids to school, and in a safe manner, unlike what's happening on Highway 23. Sheboygan County is a leader of providing cost-effective, quality programs and services. We've earned that track record. You've earned that track record. We have a thoughtful group of county board supervisors. We have a strong management team, many of which that are here this evening. And thanks to the half percent sales tax that the county board and this community supported, we now have, we are now are poised better than ever before to maintain our transportation system in a responsible manner. Greg Schnell and his team are doing 30 miles in overlay a year. That was a goal the county board established and he's hitting it, and I commend him and his staff for doing so, especially this last year with all the work being done on the new transportation complex and much of the site work being done by Greg and his crew. Some key components of the budget. Well, uh, thank you Tom Agerbrecht and the staff at the Health and Human Services. There will continue to be funding to support the drug treatment court and provide non-hospital-based detoxification services for people struggling with heroin and other drug addiction. 
Tom and his staff are responding to the need. We know more resources are needed, but we have leaders in that department that are helping people's lives turn around, and I thank you for that. The budget supports, once again, the implementation of the half percent sales tax, excuse me, to maintain our transportation system, as I just mentioned. But in addition to that, looking forward, it will reduce debt service, and we're sharing it with our partners, local units of government across the county that also are struggling with their own independent transportation needs. The final stages of the, of the construction of the new transportation complex will help, will happen this year. We're combining three facilities into one. We have additional borrowing, one more year for that to get that done. But again, Greg and Jim Beast and others are to be commended for the attention to detail and the impressive facility that's being constructed there. The budget also supports reconstruction and resurfacing projects at the airport. We have a tremendous airport. It's a jewel in the community. It's one of the first impressions many people receive. And the county board is to be credited for continuing to enhance that. And I know Charles Sweet is here this evening, and he's a key role as well. Thank you. Aaron Brault helped a lot establish the Amsterdam Dunes Wetland Mitigation Bank and Preservation Area. That former chairman, Roger DeScrudy, have lead the charge. The county board was strongly behind it. We took a leap of faith for $4.2 million to purchase it. We had that recouped. And this year in 18, the budget ahead, we're going to start actually establishing that wetland mitigation bank. So companies like Sargento and Kohler and others, if they choose to expand and impact a wetland, rather than buying very expensive credits out of the area, they can do so right here more cost effectively and further develop our, the natural resources that we have in our community. Courthouse security enhancements, Gene Gallimore, Judge Rebecca Persick, and many others, some of you in this room have participated for almost the last eight months or better on developing a plan for enhancing courthouse security. We're going to be redoing those steps that many of you are probably tired of seeing that tape when you come up. Uh, we're going to be improving the uh, pillars out there for the flagpoles, but we're also going to be putting some en enhanced security in next year. We, we had hoped to accomplish that at the beginning of the year, but bids came in so high and there's so much work going on in the community that we regrouped and we hope to get that done by next summer, summer of 18. So that's built into the budget. Well, we're going to be building a new courthouse garage right here in the south uh, part behind the building here because of the sale that the county board supported with Penn and 7th for development opportunities and increasing our tax base and providing more apartments for the community. We're going to be buying new sheriff's department squads, equipment for the highway department, funding to support the new emergency dispatch system. What a saga that was to ultimately combine the city and Sheboygan dispatch center into one. It took years to see that through. And ultimately, we came together and we delivered. But what's most important and what makes me beam with pride is our dispatchers. Folks like Christy DeBlay and Jim Rasu and the key dispatchers that are actually the ones fielding those calls and helping people in crisis. And as you know from the article that I just shared today, it was in the Monday Paper, I think, and I want to thank the Sheboygan Press for that. Usually it's Emmett Feldner we're always thanking for covering the county, but the Sheboygan Press had a really nice article on our emergency dispatchers and medical care, the kind of response they're now providing. And their training and dedication was so superb that within minutes of implementing it, and perhaps hoping, geez, are we really going to be using this today, within minutes they helped somebody who could have potentially bled to death. If you see one of our emergency responders or dispatchers, say thank you, because they have done a tremendous job. Funding will be in the 2018 budget to continue to support that. Rocky No, I've talked about Rocky No in the past and the tremendous job we've been doing out there. Rochelle Valeski, as you know, is now retired. Kayla Clinton is our new administrator. She's hit the ground running. Our census is terrific out there. Good things are happening. We're collaborating with the new transportation complex on the tower and on waste and how that all is going to be uh, working out there. But the, the bottom line is we're providing outstanding <coughs> care to the residents. And there's funding in the budget to make some enhancements to that beautiful building. Beautiful building. 
and of course continued support for the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. There's been a long-term partnership between the city, the county, and the private sector to support the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation's efforts. And as you know, if you follow their newsletters and information, good things have happened countywide because of their work. We have a culture here of collaboration and problem solving and helping make good things happen. And I can't be more proud to, to work with the Sheboygan County Board and work with so many strong managers to meet the needs of this community. Sheboygan County is a tremendous place to live and raise a family, in part because of the good work and the support of this county board and our team here. And I thank you for that. And this budget really reflects that. In fact, if you look at our track record, if you look at the last 10 years, on average, each year, property taxes have gone up less than 1%. Less than 1%. Our payroll today is less than it was in 2008. Many of you know this, but many people in the community don't. And that is a very impressive fiscal track record. And it shows how hard our management team and everyone has been working together to be creative, to streamline, to consolidate, to get more efficient. We should all take pride in that. So this evening, I'm proud, along with the Finance Committee, the Executive Committee, every Liaison Committee, to present the 2018 budget, because every one of us had an opportunity for input and to position the County Board and our community for success. Started back in June already with our County Board Leadership Forum, all the Standing Committees meeting, the individual department meetings, and certainly the Finance Committee, Greg Wegeman and the Finance Committee deserve a lot of credit for the role they have in helping pull that all together. I'd certainly be remiss if I didn't mention Wendy Sharnan, our Finance Director, and her team for their <coughs> outstanding work pulling all the information together, presenting it. Thank you, Wendy. The proposed budget consists of a total property tax levy of $48.5 million. The total budget itself, with all state, federal, private pay, all the dollars and grants that go into it, is $149 million. This is a big operation, $149 million budget. We have a $3.5 million increase built in this year because of the sales tax <coughs> revenue. And I did report on this in the past, but as you recall, we budgeted six and three quarter million for 2017. We budgeted nine million for 2018. We're on target to modestly receive more revenue than budgeted for this year, and we, we hope to be on track for the year ahead. So that has gone well, and it, as I said, is really helping with our transportation needs. The budget supports 19 departments, 825 employees, and over 200 programs and services. There is a lot going on here. Always opportunities to learn always opportunities to problem solve, and always opportunities to help make good things happen in this community. So I want to end my presentation on the budget with a little fun, because Chairman Wagner likes to introduce a little fun in his meetings. <laughs> when so, possible. So uh, Elaine, if you could please fire up the slideshow. So during, I think, an agenda meeting last week, I said, geez, it's going to be Halloween when we present our budget. Do you think I could get all the department heads to dress up in Halloween outfits for the county board meeting? And Tom immediately looked at me and he said, that is the worst idea I've ever heard. Are you kidding? Don't dare do that. What are you thinking? And he was right. No, none of the department heads would have wanted to do that that I'm aware of. But yesterday, as I was driving in, with 24 hours notice, I sent a little note out to the department heads and I said, if you're so inclined, if you could please forward my assistant Elaine a photo of you as a child, teenager, adult in a Halloween outfit. And I'm going to play a little bit Guess Who for the next two minutes. First slide, please. Guess Who. <laughs> That would be our transportation director, Greg Schnell, <laughs> a fine-looking penguin. 
Next slide, please. Guess who? Clerk of Courts, Melody Lorgi. <laughs> Guess who? Laura. This one might be a little easier. Laura, thank you for sharing this. In fact, she was with a picture of all of her staff in this, and they all look terrific. Next slide, please. Guess who? Is that, this has got to be the most adorable picture. <laughs> this is our newest department head working for Sheboygan County, Kayla Clinton. <laughs> Next slide. Guess who? <laughs> Al Bosman, who is that? <laughs> yeah, it looks familiar. That does look familiar. That is Elaine Bosman, who I again thank you for pulling this together for me. Next slide. Guess who? <laughs> a little bit of a haircut. That would be our finance director. Next slide. Guess who? Aaron Brault, planning director, taking out his little boy. That certainly must look familiar. Gene Gallimore, HR director. The cat woman, I guess. Huh? There we have Tom Wagner and his crew. Tom is just so good about morale opportunities and health and human services. You think about what they deal with day in and day out. And Tom, how many years now has your department been doing Halloween dress up? Is this recent or? Well, it is fantastic to see the, walk, the participation they get from staff and folks really have fun and you can see some of the key managers up there with, with Tom, but my, my credit to them for bringing a little fun into the office. We all need that. Next slide. Guess who? That would be your Sheboygan County Administrator. <laughs> Supervisor Uraner, notice her, I'm wearing a little devil's cluster. <laughs> 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 Look cute. <laughs> thank you. My wife gets credit for finding that for me yesterday, so thank you. Next slide, please. And that's it. We ended with that. Well, I wanted to end also with introducing one more department head. You understand, or you recall with UW Extension, they had the re regionalization. And they changed it from having every county having department head to having a regional person who would work on be with three, four, five different departments, uh, counties rather. And I was a little leery about this because I'm so used to uh, Jane Jensen and one of her staff coming to department head meetings and they're so good to work with and we have such a good UW Extension crew. And so Cindy Sarkady, as I say, Cindy, could you please stand and be recognized? Cindy is the new department head for UW Extension. She, her official title is UW Extension Area Director. She will serve as the department head for Sheboygan, Ozaki, Washington, and Fond du Lac. Her office is in uh, Fort Washington, but she chose Sheboygan County to live in. <laughs> and I now have had a couple of meetings with Cindy, and I'm just so pleased that she was hired. I think she's a breath of fresh air. I think she brings new ideas, and I think she'll be a real asset to our department at meetings. So welcome, Cindy, and have a good discussion tonight on the county board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. And, and thank you for all your work on the budget, and to all the supervisors, members of the liaison committees, thank you for all your, your work on that, and especially to the finance committee, who does a lot of the heavy lifting. And in, also a thank you to the staff members, many of whom are here in the back there. Thank you for all your work you do for Sheboygan County. Next, I'd like to declare a public hearing on the proposed 2018 budget. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in regards to the budget? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. John, do we ask them to give their like name? Being a little high for me. <laughs> kind of vertically challenged. Uh, good evening and happy Halloween. I'm Jody Scherner. I'm the CFO at Masters Gallery Foods. Uh, we have facilities in the city of Plymouth, the town of Linden, and soon to be the village of Oostburg. I was born and raised in Sheboygan County and currently live in the town of Plymouth with my husband and son. I am so proud of all the growth I have seen in this county over the years and hope to see even more in the future. It is truly a great place 
to find a good paying job and raise a family. I also serve as an officer on the board of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. Tonight I'm here speaking on behalf of the SCEDC Board of Directors and would like to thank Sheboygan County for your financial support of our growing organization that supports this whole county. We feel it is appropriate to provide you with a brief update as to our actions and encourage your continued support. The SCEDC focus is on four main services for Sheboygan County, businesses and communities. We focus on entrepreneurship, non-traditional financing, site selection, and workforce development. The staff, the staff at the SEDC helps startups, helps existing businesses expand, and assists newer companies by providing a business plan and marketing plan services in coordination with the Small Business Development Center out of UW-Green Bay. Startup services have been utilized by Compassionate Care Veterinary Clinic, as well as Pathways Detox Facility in Waldo. The SEDC has helped to create expansion plans for Duratrell in Sheboygan Falls and Wolf Motorsports in Elkhart Lake. And we've assisted ownership transitions such as Q-Cube in Plymouth and the Village at 170 in Sheboygan Falls. The SEDC has also assisted many firms with non-traditional loans and tax credits to ensure expansions in the area. The SEDC has assisted with loan programs for Dutchland Plastics in Oostburg, the Osthoff in Elkhart Lake, and the Hub Cafe in Plymouth. Even Masters Gallery Food has benefited from services of the SEDC. We contacted the SEDC when we were going, to, going through site selection for our new cheese packaging facility to find out what was available in Sheboygan County. We also looked outside of the state of Wisconsin in many parts of the United States. Before Masters chose the location in Oostburg, the SEADC team was instrumental in assisting to keep this expansion here in Sheboygan County. Their team introduced us to all available business parks in Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Sheboygan, Oostburg, and Random Lake. And each community was given equal consideration by the SEADC who were simply providing options and introductions. The SEADC also provided guidance to us when working with the WEDC regarding our new facility. These introductions for motions is a part of the SEADC site selection service. The SEADC has assisted with funding suitable area, finding suitable area compatible with community's long range plans, such as Badger Tagen Label, who settled in the town of Sherman, and numerous apartment developers who collectively are building or planning to build a thousand apartment units, which are sorely needed, given the fact that so many local companies are looking for employees. The final service has been workforce. This one is kind of near and dear to my heart. Through the creation of the Joseph Project, a countywide push for housing and the Someplace Better campaign, the SEEDC has been on the front line of trying to help firms solve our toughest challenge, which is simply finding employees. The SEEDC has used Someplace Better online assets to host several job fairs for her firms solving short-term needs. Just two, sorry, just two weeks ago, both Bemis Manufacturing in Sheboygan Falls, as well as Certainty in Plymouth, hosted job fairs. Over 130 individuals showed up at the job fairs to fill 90 jobs. That need for employees is just from two companies. I'm sure that the job growth in this county helped to have Sheboygan listed as one of the lowest poverty rates of any metro in the United States. In short, the accomplishments of the SEDC are too numerous to go through in such a short time. We could talk about how we are instrumental in expanding the Sheboygan Falls Vision Business Park, how the organization entered into a partnership with the town of Sheboygan to encourage large-scale retail development, which is badly needed in this community, or how we are continuously trying to get out positive economic news stories about Sheboygan County to encourage other in others to invest here. We know from our data that even if we help a company create 100 jobs in Sheboygan Falls, 
that Sheboygan Falls will only provide about 30 to 40 percent of them. The rest have to come from other places in the county. We are all in this together. From my time on the SEDC, one thing is clear. The team and board of directors care about a countywide effort. We strongly feel that rising tides lift all boats. And the county needs a strong EDC that continuously champions for investments in our communities. When I talk with my CFO counterparts from across the country and in the state, <coughs> no one has an EDC that does as much as ours to help local businesses expand, bring in new business, and assist with workforce development. Finally, I would like to thank several previous and current board members, including Roger Testrudi, Thomas Wagner, and Adam Payne. Thank you all for your service. On behalf of the Board of Directors for the SEDC, we would like to thank the County Board for your past and hopefully future support of the SEDC. So thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Jerry. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the uh, 2018 budget? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the 2018 budget? Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the 2018 budget? Seeing and hearing none, I declare the public hearing <coughs> closed. Next, we'll have a review of the 2018 proposed budget. And those of you, most of you have level five, I think the finance members and maybe somebody else have a level seven, so most level five is the one we, we go through here, so that helps at all. And I remember from last year, I was told to slow down a little bit, so I will try and remember to do that. I'm not going fast on purpose. So, uh, Mr. Dolson, if you want to start. Sure. In the uh, budget index on page I, lowercase i, Building Services, page 35 through 37. It should be just one page into the budget. Everybody good? Okay, then we'll go on to the next one. Clerk of Courts, pages 38 and 39. Okay, next one, John. Corporation Council, pages 40 and 41. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. County Maybe we should go back to that one. Yeah. That was a side comment. County Administrator, pages 42 and 43. Next. Supervisor Adam. Yeah, I'm concerned about the uh, county administrator's uh, budget in regards to uh, a 6% change. I thought we were trying to hold everybody below a certain amount. And uh, I would question why that went up that much. Thank you, Supervisor Adam. Do you want to, or do you want to Wendy? The executive committee and HR committee approved an equity adjustment for me last year that will take effect in 2018, so that's part of it. And also the assistant to the administrator also received an equity adjustment. So there were adjustments made in the salary area. Thank you, Supervisor Adam. So 
Ambassador Damp. Uh, the amount of your wages, does that include all of your uh, wage and uh, your assistance wage? Or are those divided between your department and the county board department? Go ahead. Is the combination of my full wage and half of my assistance wage, the other half of her wage is covered in the county board budget? Thank you, for Supervisor Dan. Okay, now we'll move on to the next one, okay. John. County Board, page 44. <coughs> Supervisor Dan. Under the wages, uh, we see the other half of your assistance. And what about the benefits? What are the benefits there? Are those half? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, move on. John? County Clerk, page 45 and 46. <coughs> Next. Court Commissioner, pages 47 and 48. Next. District Attorney, pages 49 and 50. Next. Employee benefits and insurance, pages 51 and 52. <coughs> Supervisor Urena. Yes, out of our insurance balance. I have it correct. Yes. The insurance reserve? Yes. Balance? Yes. Okay. You're welcome. Next. Finance pages 53 and 54. Services pages fifty eight, sorry, fifty five through fifty eight. Next, human resources pages fifty nine and sixty. Next. Information technology, pages 61 and 62. Next. Medical examiner, page 63. Supervisor Baumgart. I thought we had an answer that night. My yep might not have done it. My mother would really be upset if she knew I said yep first of all. So I hope I didn't say that, but if I did, I accept yeah, that. Yeah, you agreed that, that <laughs> you should get it. Yeah, and obviously you didn't. I thought it was discussed. Uh, I can wait until after the uh, meeting, but I, I would like to know what it's uh, paid for. Maybe absolutely. I, <coughs> I apologize. It was my, my I was Whether remiss. Yes or yep, absolutely. <laughs> 
No, and Elaine, would you please make note of that? So I, thank you. Now I know it will get done. <laughs> okay, the next one, John. Non-departmental, pages 64 and 65. Supervisor Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to cut $100,000 from the grants line 533910, which has a total amount of $1,477,115. And that cut is to be made from the Sheboygan County Economic, Economic Commission, S-D-E-C-D. -D. I'm elected to this position by the voters of the town of Sheboygan, Ward 10. Uh, just a minute. Are you wishing me to? There's a second, or? Yeah, you need to get a second, Brian, first. So All right. I'll, then I'll recognize you. Uh, Supervisor Rainer? I will second to be able to speak. That's fine. Thank you, Supervisor Rainer. If you say the second, now I'll go back to Supervisor Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. I'm elected to this position by the voters of the town of Sheboygan, Ward 10, the village of Kohler, and the town of Wilson, Wards 3 and 4. The reason I am asking to cut $100,000 from the Sheboygan County Economic Development Commission is because I believe this commission has promoted the city of Sheboygan at the expense of towns and villages, especially towns. Dane Chikolinski, speaking in front of the city council on the annexation issue, which affected the town of Wilson, left the definite idea that the town of Wilson land would be better off being in the city. I am not the only county board supervisor that represents a rural area that thinks his presentation was a bit over the top. After Dane's presentation, I asked Administrator Adam Payne to speak to Dane to reel it in a bit. Adam spoke to him. Dane did not reel it in. The next time he spoke to the city council, he was even more emphatic that the city should pass the annexation. After this time, another well-respected county board supervisor directly said to Adam in my presence, after Adam asked his opinion, that Dane was wrong to say what he did. This county supervisor said that to Adam. Adam will remember this very well. In the ensuing weeks, several other county board members have agreed with me. After all this, Adam suggested I talk to the chairman of the board of the SCEDC. I did so and really got nowhere. The bottom line <coughs> is that we here in the towns and villages also pay taxes. We do not appreciate our money used to support the city's position over the towns. The SEDC -S -E should be neutral. It should not drive a wedge between cities and the rural areas. The real bottom line is that the town of Wilson was hurt by the SEDC. -E the 100,000 that I'm proposing could probably be used in a more, uh, better way. That's probably the wrong English. I have no argument with a lot of what the commission does. They do a lot of good things, but this is a shot over the bow to have them rethink what they are doing. Work with the towns. Ask the towns what they think. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Any other discussion on that? Motion. Supervisor Urena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Wagner. I did, did have a question. I, isn't, isn't the SCEDC more of an arm of the county? Um, wasn't it established by this county some years ago? I know, you know it is. We had a lot of support. I don't, you know, I don't know if we call them an arm. They're an independent corporation that receive our support, and we certainly, uh, I'm on their board. Roger was on before me. Uh, we have a revolving loan committee, which uh, a number of us are on. That's what kind of Jody was talking about, the different loans that have gone out to the different places, whether it be Masters Gallery and Williamsburg. So, I, you know, they're a, they're a separate entity. I know the city of Plymouth used them, and uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that different people have used. And, uh, so 
continue my question. I, Go ahead. I think they're a good thing. Um, I, I do see them as more of an arm of our county. They're in our administrative building, and they, aren't they? Yes, they are. Located here, so beyond our support, which, which I was going to ask, uh, is that 100000 the county pays, and I know the city pays a chunk, and I think different municipalities also pay. Uh, so it is very much funded by our government. Um, and um, so, okay, so we-, we it's a, it's a, If you want me to, I can answer. It's a private-public partnership. We give 100000 the city of Sheboygan does. Different entities do. They raise money from the private Right. Sector two, I don't have the exact numbers. I realize I, I've contributed to it over the past. So, okay, um, we've got the, the, I think the primary supporters are our, our, our government. So thank you, that was the question. We contribute 100,000, plus we also provide uh, the county the facilities for the, the group uh, to be housed here. Office space, that is correct. Okay. I'm not sure about the equipment. I don't think so. Okay, I was just curious as I was trying to understand how, how that all fits together then, and um, and it's its own separate entity. However, it is. Yeah, there's bylaws and yeah, we have a sure. Board. So, and I know some communities it is actually part of the county, and right. I know. Um, Fonley County for one, I believe. Right. So when we established, I, I believe that came out of, of the county. Isn't that correct? It was Carol, you want to answer? It's a completely separate entity. It is not uh, controlled by the county, nor was it originated by the county. Uh, okay. it, it, yeah, it, it is not a county okay. entity. Thank you. Stretch of the thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just feel the need to speak tonight because I'm also a town chairman and chairman of the town of Sherman and also for the last 23 years have been the county unit chairperson, the chairperson for the group of all of the towns, the 15 towns in Sheboygan County. While I will not be supporting supervisor, the supervisor's motion tonight, I understand what he has said and agree with a lot of what he says. This $100,000 is county dollars. The SDEC should not be picking winners and losers. And as I read the article in the Sheboygan Press, they were picking winners. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gary. Anyone else? Anyone else want to speak on it? If not, then there's a motion on the floor. Uh, yes supports uh, Supervisor Hoffman <coughs> to remove the $100,000 support of SCD, and no means it stays in the budget. Correct? So yes or no? Motion is defeated, six I and 16 A. Thank you. We'll move on to the next one then, if there aren't any other questions on that one. Planning and conservation pages 66 through 69. Supervisor so, Urena. Thank you. Thank you. I did not press my button soon enough. I did have a question on the non department. If it's okay to go back. Go ahead. I, we, I heard a beep, but there was no green light. Yeah, I, I heard a beep. So, the question I have related to the non department is it's my understanding if we have ever have extra funds in our capital fund, sometimes, as has happened in 2016, I was told we can funnel those funds for um, expenses such as the radio program. And I was wondering, do we keep kind of a history of those funds <coughs> from bonding that we um, use to purchase capital that were budgeted, but then not, not used for that budget purpose? Perhaps a finance director question. Yeah, either Adam or finance director. That question, Wendy. Um, I think I understand it as she's wondering if we're trusting, uh, making sure that when we're needing to use fund balance in, con uh, in coordination with the capital projects funds, that we're tracking this appropriately, and that if the fund balance is 
Um, I think that's the question, and if the fund balance isn't completely used, that, that we're able to see that fall into the back to the general fund, is that the question? So let me, I'm sorry, I did explain it, so it's kind of complicated, so I was using a specific example. In 2016, the, we did have budgeted the radios in the non-department, however, there was extra bonding money, so we used the bonding money instead of the several million dollars for the, the radio project. So then that created a positive like, million dollar fund balance. So I guess my question is, when that occurs, is, is, is that something we can see somewhere that we are moving, you know, we're, take, we're not really taking it, we're leaving it in the budget, but we're using money from a different bucket. In the 2016 for the radio project, the funding was necessary because we were short and we weren't able to cover the radio, the subscriber radios. What occurred were some savings in the bonding <coughs> area, which we did allocate some of the bonded funds to assist in paying for the radios, but we still needed to request by resolution $1.8 million to finish off the subscriber radio project. That project has not closed yet, and we have final payments still yet this year. We're anticipating at the end of November. Um, the way the project currently is is showing, we do have savings savings throughout the entire project at this time. Thank you, Wendy. I'll follow up on that question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, John, where are we? Uh, we were on planning and conservation, pages 66 through 69. Thank you. Next. Property and liability insurance, page 70. Next. Register of deeds, pages 71 and 72. Next. Rocky Knoll, pages 73 through 75. Supervisor Adam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted the uh, county board supervisor to understand what the amount that was being asked for in the tax levy. And last year, $844,577 down to $670,883. Uh, this was accomplished through a lot of effort on the part of the shell and the, and the whole staff out there. And, uh, so I think it should be noted because it wasn't long ago that we wrote well over a million dollars over there. And, uh, so, just wanted to be comfortable to recognize that. Thank you, Supervisor. Next. Sheriff, pages 76 through 79. Supervisor Hoffman. Just a quick question uh, to the Sheriff's Department. Um, I understand that Ford has been having some troubles with their explorers and that uh, several departments now are not even going to buy them because of the fact that their officers are getting sick from the exhaust fumes emitted by the vehicle. Are we aware of that and are we purchasing Fords? Uh, and are they explorers? Uh, just, just a question, I'm kind of curious about it because I am concerned about the safety of our officers. As we all are, thank you. Uh, Inspector Rizzo, would you mind? Yes, uh, we had experienced some of those same problems long before I ever hit the news. Um, our mechanic that does an excellent job, they detect some problems as far back as I think a year and a half ago. Um, he knows what to watch for, he's made corrections on a few of them, uh, made for the aware of it. Um, I understand that they've made corrections in the years following, the model years following that. Um, we'll be watching for that. And I don't know which vehicles will be available for purchase this year, but um, we'll certainly be taking a look at that. 
Thank you, Inspector. Anything else on that one? We'll go on. Next, John. Transportation, Airport Division, pages 80 through 82. Next. Transportation Highway Division, pages 83 through 86. Supervisor Urena. Mr. Wagner, I do have a question relating to the, the sales tax then. Um, is that going into the interdepartmental revenues? Or where is that coming in? And uh, since we budgeted $9 million for sales tax for 18, where would the other $2 million be? Thank you. Uh, Wendy, you want to? The sales tax is reported in the Transportation's Capital Projects Fund on, on page. the original resolution that we passed. Thank you. Hey, John, you want to go on? Treasurer, pages 87 and 88. Bless you. Next. You got me extension, pages 89 and 90. Next. UW Sheboygan, page 91. Next. Veterans Commission, page 92. Okay, that concludes the budget review. You have a question, Supervisor Bauer? No, I think we did that, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Ray? Either Adam or Wendy, you want to, you've been up the bat a few times. That's fine, take your time. I still can't believe I said yup, but if I did, I'm going to have to get rid of that. It's really bothered me. <laughs> Yep. Okay, as I see in the 
introductory memo from County Administrator at Payne. In the second paragraph, I believe you're referring to this statement saying that the debt service levy decrease was accomplished due to the contribution of two million thirty-five thousand four hundred six from sales tax revenue and redirected highway department levy to offset the burden. That redirection from a highway is the general fund contribution of the one million or thirty-five plus the one million from the general commission. Thank you, Wendy. Emmett just made a face back there, but no, go ahead. I'm sorry, Emmett, the uh, piece of scratch that should bring it past. As I, I, I get both wrong. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, so think, is that one, the only one document, or are there others that are part of that? And I, I know Administrator Payne, I had emailed you a number of times, and you suggested I talk with Emmett, but I um, you know, respectfully decided that should be something I should be able to see. I realize I've asked other supervisors who don't know that answer either, so it's rather rather helpful to know what, what we are providing to the public so I can answer my neighbors accordingly as well what, you know, what we're providing. Adam, you want to? Sure. Thank you, Super, Supervisor Urena, for the question. Uh, by state law, we have to provide certain notification of the budget increase, decrease, and in history, and that's part of the packet. That's the same information that the uh, Plymouth Review receives which is generally, I think, a one-page summary. It's a very high-end summary, again, that's in your packet. I'm pretty certain if I went back and looked at the emails, you did get a response on that, but perhaps Emma Feldner could give you a copy of it or share it with you a little bit more. But it's the same document that we've used as long as I can remember. I think it's page two and three, page two and three. What page? Page two and page three. Page two and three, it's the same document we've used historically to provide to the press, who then shares that with the, with the public. So it's basically two pages then, and then is this also the graphs going to the paper? Are there three pages, or? If I may, Mr. Sure. Uh, the graphs we have shared with the press over the years, sometimes as part of a news release, which I sent to the press through my assistant Elaine just before the meeting today, kind of presenting the budget, giving a high end picture. We've used those graphs to give presentations to Rotary Clubs and others so they can get a big picture. And also, it was a number of years ago, and I recall Dick Bemis in particular being complimentary of it. I worked with Laura Henning Lorenz in the treasurer's office, and we added that to the tax bill. And the reason we did that is everyone receives their tax bill, and sometimes it's a little hard to follow exactly how the county dollars are being spent. So we added those charts and graphs, which again are very high end, but they give you a quick snapshot of our performance, where the dollars are being spent. And I just have one more comment, thank you. So I'm going to assume then the two pages that uh, Attorney Jesse pointed out, two and three, are the two that. That would be a safe assumption. And it's not summarized differently. It's if exactly I, this. If I could. Statute, Go ahead, Carol. The statute requires the county to purchase a newspaper, uh, essentially advertisement. It requires minimum submissions, which are all incorporated into what you see as pages two and three. Now, that is what the county purchases. Above and beyond that, the county makes available to all news media everything, which is a matter of public record, including this stuff, and the newspapers can pick and choose what they want to include in their coverage. But everything is made available to them, but by statute, we are required to purchase a two-page ad 
essentially notifying the public of the public hearing tonight and to include some of the summary information. Thank you, Carl. These are not the documents that are going in the paper then. We're summarizing that for them. The two pages of the advertisement that the county purchases. Everything is made accessible and available to the news media by way of the online submissions which incorporate the two pages and any other resources that are created become public documents available to the news media. Thank you. Thank you. You said that last time. You did. Thank you. Go ahead. So as I pointed out, we do see that the budget history and I pointed out a few times, it would really be helpful to see a history of our actual activity. This is the only organization I've ever been involved with that shows the 10 year budget history and not really the actual activity that occurred. No criticism there, just a point of reference. And with that, we do see we actually our actual increase in 2017 ended up being over 14% based upon our new sales tax revenue coming in for 17 at 7.4 million versus the 6 million. The other piece that I know I've asked for, it's great that we are a wonderful county with great cost effective government. I have taxpayers that have told me they live, they have homes in other parts of our state and they're paying a significant amount less in taxes. So the other piece, and many of you also, we have family and friends and relatives throughout different parts of the United States that we compare tax rates, which we accountants like to do. It's just something we do for fun. There's a big difference. And what I've seen is other counties, Eau Claire and La Crosse, provide a cost per capita of what it's costing with both sales tax and with the tax levy to determine what that rate is in comparison to other counties. And I still have over the last four years encouraged we do the same to really have an accurate picture of what our cost structure is in comparison with others so we can proudly say, are we in that same category or are we not? And we don't have to match costs because there's other great things. I understand that. But I think it would be a good metric for our county to have and I encourage it and will continue each year to encourage we have those type of metrics to really measure how great we are, if that's how we want to put it, against our peer counties. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Otten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to reference page 13. Okay, page 13. I have a question in regard to the building service courthouse maintenance garage. What does the other source represent? Our finance director is up to bat again. Wendy? We're looking at $255,673 that is coming from the fund balance. But it is what is remaining from, if you recall, the sale of the properties on Pennsylvania. To initiate the purchases, we would replenish the general fund and this is what was remaining off of those proceeds and it's going to be channeled towards this construction of the new garage. So does it represent what we were paid for the property? Is that what you're saying? It represents what we received for the property, a portion of what we received. First, we replenished the initial purchase of the properties and on this purchase then we're going to use the remaining proceeds we're going to receive from the sale towards the reconstruction of the garage. So we're receiving 
That's correct. Adam, do you want to talk to that? That's a good question, and this was an area where we weren't pleasantly surprised. I think originally we had an architect say the building could be about 250000 and the cost came in closer to three hundred or better. Uh, so obviously we're looking at Aaron Brawl, Jim Tavis. They're working with the, the architects to see if we can bring that down. But at the same time, keep in mind the sale of Ten and seventh not only took care of a blighted area, an underutilized parking lot, but it's going to create a wonderful resource for the community and apartments, underground parking, as I understand the proposal, and tax base for years to come that will more than replenish any offset with building the new maintenance garage that really Jim Tavist and his staff need. The other thing I wanted to quickly uh, touch on was Supervisor Rainer raised a good point that you know it's, we always want to compare ourselves to other counties and see how we're doing and, and improve. And that's why I'm so proud to work for this organization because everyone here wants to continuously improve. Uh, recently, and, and I don't think most board members are aware of this, but the executive committee is, recently Sheboygan County was asked to give a presentation on our leadership forum. Because as far as I know, I think we're one of the only counties in the state that has an annual county board leadership forum. We put out all of our fiscal information. We look at our track record from the past year, our fiscal performance, and we look at our fiscal outlook. And as part of that, as you all well know, we do do some comparing and contrasting with other counties. No doubt we can further improve that process. Always room for improvement. But the reason we were asked to present to a number of other county chairs and representatives from across the state was they really liked what Sheboygan County's been doing to be transparent and share information about our fiscal performance and outlook. So it's a credit to our team here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Adam. Roger, did you have a follow-up on that? Well, the only thing I'm concerned about is that we have put in this 367000 um, Is that higher than we really expect to pay? Is that what you're saying? I mean, it sounds like an awful lot for a garage. I don't disagree. It's, that's a lot of money for a garage. This is not a typical garage that you and I are pulling our cars into, as you know. It's going to be a tremendous investment for our county and our building services staff. This was discussed, as you recall, during the five-year capital plan development, which you adopted at the last board meeting or the board meeting before. So it's built in. Supervisor Ott and I agree, it's pricier than we had hoped. I know that we're working to streamline that cost yet, but ultimately we want to build a garage that's going to reflect on the courthouse, provide a key uh, area of support for building services, and be there for probably the next 100 years. So we want to do it right. It's kind of like the front entrance of the steps. I mentioned about that with the security enhancement. We did the bid, it came in far higher than we thought to do the steps, to repair the steps. And it really was not good news, even though the architect that we relied on and hired said this is what we thought it would cost. The bids came in much higher, so we're regrouping. But at the end of the day, do we build steps that don't match the courthouse, that don't make a favorable first impression? We want to do it right, because this, this courthouse is a grand facility, and anything we do to it, we want it to be an attractive investment for the community. Thank you, Adam. And Supervisor Nelson, who's been waiting very patiently. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, with respect to uh, information to the public, I guess, those of us that uh, still listen to WHBL, those of us that still listen to WHBL, uh, we get a good common sense summary of, uh, of the uh, economics of the county by, uh, by um, County Administrator Payne, and uh, I want to thank him for that. So, so uh, if we don't get it through the uh, press, if we don't get it through the uh, Plymouth News, we still can get it on the radio. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. I'd like to bring your attention, and then we've gone over it before, Health and Human Services budget. As I look at it, it says, Tax levy required, percent change from the 2017 budget is 2.27, and the total is um, 
previous page, total expenses of 95. Considering the Health and Human Services budget is one of the biggest budgets there are for our county, I wish to commend highly uh, Tom Eckebrecht and his team for turning in a budget that he has turned in that we are considering here. I think he did an excellent job considering all the problems that their department has to work with. I, I highly commend them and wish them well and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Before I recognize uh, Supervisor Bemis, uh, I have one quick announcement. We're going to be putting in a new system for voting. Remember I mentioned that I think last month because we believe this system is on its last legs. So as part of, and it'll start, it'll take place in January at our January meeting. But our IT department needs our iPads and they need all our iPads at once. I know. <laughs> so what you need to do is bring your iPad to the next meeting on November 7th. They're going to collect them and you will get it back and they will put the software in it. They need all of them at once and then you'll get them back, I think, beginning after November 13th. We will send you other in information on this and email out, just to be fine, but I wanted to let you know. It's something we just have to do if we're gonna do this forward, so. Oh, and I also, yes, and this is why Carl is here. The uh, budget will be sent back to the Finance Committee automatically for its final recommendation that'll come at the November 7th meeting, so we don't need a motion on that. So thank you very much, everybody, and Supervisor Bemis. Move we adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis, Supervisor Winkle. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Please push your eye button.